and Wreck TV. They have Kendrick in their mouth. They shouldn't even have J. Cole in their mouth. And I'm not saying those guys are not good, but they mm. small fries to my mm. heroes, which Rakim mm. has to be one. Rakim's one of my heroes. Melly Mel's one of my heroes. Big Daddy Kane's right. one of my heroes. I could go on and on. How you Let's feeling, first and foremost, um, my brother? Oh, I'm good, man. I've been good. I'm blessed, man. I can't. I, I really, really can't complain, man. You know. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Life, pretty good. Life has been pretty good. Yes, sir. Um, I know you are, but I'm gonna ask you anyway. You familiar with my brand, right? Oh yeah. Okay. And um, you know, when I ask questions, I like to get to the square root. So right. there's nothing to get offensive about. Right. Know, I'm a I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, a lot of people doing it now. A lot of rappers, yeah. you know, because I do music first. A lot right. of rappers, you know, they doing it now because I opened the lane up. Yeah. Right? But they didn't pay homage, and it's cool. You right, right. right, right. But I was doing this in-depth interview thing a long time because before the, the questions was real generic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you know what it is. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah. I ain't got to tell you, you know what I'm saying? So um, I'm going to ask you some things that you spoke on in the okay. past and then also your history and then what you got going on now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we're going to go right to it. So um, you ready? I'm ready. All right. Peace, world. You're locked into MREC TV. I got a legend in the building, my brother, Daddy Yo, from East Salute. New York, Stetson Sonic and all yeah. that. Salute, my brother. So first and foremost, who is Daddy O? So Daddy O is what I grew into because mm -hmm. I didn't choose that name for myself. A word? Yeah. So so originally who chose that for you? Originally, there was a group out of Long Island called the Stetson Brothers. Mm. And that's where we get our style from, that's where we get our name from and all of that. They actually have Torch and told us we could be the Stetson brothers. But they started mm -hmm. hunting. But we didn't want to keep the same name. We didn't want people to be confused about it. So Delight came up with the name Stetson Son. But prior to that, I used to call myself Dr. On. Dr. And on? Dr. On, O N, right? Gotcha. So I was learning how to rap, learning how to mm -hmm. get together. Nathaniel, who's one of the Stetson brothers, that's actually the guy who taught me my style. He literally one day saw me walking down the block and he was like, yo, Kareem, Kareem, come over here. Come over here. I had my box. He was like, you be rapping, right? You be rapping, right? I said, yeah. He said, um, what, what, what's your name? What, you know, what's your mm -hmm. rap name? I said, mm -hmm. Dr. Orn. He said, no, fuck that. Fuck that. That's corny. Your name going to be different. You're going to run it down just like this. And he went, D to the A double D Y O. I go by the code of MC Daddy O. And this is something that you must be told. You couldn't touch me with a short shot pole, Daddy O. Wow. MC Daddy O came back for more, y'all. Now Ooh. do it. <laughs> then he said, so, hold on. He wrote it in and spit it he for you? He said that from the top of his head. Wow. And what's his and name again? He showed me the style, Nathaniel. And he showed mm. me the style that they used to call a gangster rock. Mm. But, but, but honestly, when Run DMC first came out mm -hmm. on Sucker MCs, people thought that was us. Because mm. we was the only ones rocking hard like that. Nobody was Got rocking you. hard. Nobody had no rough voices. Nobody. Mm. It was us. And that was it. Because we were taught the gangster rock. The other thing that happened with him was mm -hmm. crazy. Was flashing them my favorite group. Mm, got and and he, he said, Stetson Brothers beat flashing them. Stetson Brothers beat flashing them. I'm like, how you beat Mel? I'm like, how did that happen? I mm. swear to God, I lost it in storage. I wish I had that tape. He finally found the tape. I heard it. They told wow. Mel telling them a new asshole. Damn. They was nice because they, the, the, and, and this is how they taught me to run. They told me to rhyme. Even when I met Granddaddy IU, I'm all over the place, but even when That's I met home, Granddaddy IU, uh -huh. I told him I was mad at him. He said, why? I said, because you rap on the beats. I like the rap one because they taught me to rap to slow beats. Mm. You know what I mean? I used mm -hmm. to walk around East New York with a lot of people don't know that the, the Barry White records, most of the 45s he put out, the beats are instrumental. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. So I used to walk around with a yellow disc, 45, 
I'm going to love you a little bit more. That do 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 And I used to tell the DJ to put it on 33 and step away from the turntables. Mm. And it used to be mad slow. Like, boom, 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 boom. And I used to just kill it. Mm. I used to just kill it. And, 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 and so that was, and I grew into being daddy-o. I grew gotcha. into this. I guess character, which is really now me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but that's what mm -hmm. I but that's what I grew into. Got you. So Stetsasonic, where did that name come from? The light like, made the name up because we was originally the Stetson brothers. Got again. You, I got that. And he was like, nah, D, like, you know what I'm saying? I don't want people to be confusing. He said, mm -hmm. What about Stetsasonic? I said, What that mean? He said, Stetson means style, Sonic means sound. I was like, mm -hmm. I can like that. You know what I mean? We became Stetsasonic because D came up with the name and we liked it. And then we just, man, it took us so long mm -hmm. to figure out the personnel. There's, mm. so, there's so many people that were members of Stetsasonic. They still are peoples. But mm. we went through a lot of MCs and all that. Like maybe four DJs. Dang. Like that. Wow. That's, that's crazy. So originally, um, once you got the group formed, it's six members, right? Originally, uh, originally it's six members, correct? Okay. Yeah, and but Bobby course, wasn't in. Bobby wasn't in the group. The drummer wasn't in the group at first. Okay, gotcha. So the way that this, the way we used to perform is, um, the way we used to perform is, uh, uh, D DBC was doing all the music, like most mm -hmm. of the music. Paul was not really producing until we started doing the records. Mm. You know what I mean? Okay. But they, but when we used to perform originally, it used to be two sets of DJs, like Doug, like Dougie used to have. So, wow. but the only difference between DB and them was DB would have his drum machines and everything, mm. plus two turntables, and Paul Dope. would have his turntables. And so that's how we began to call ourselves a hip hop band, just because we were doing it like that. And Bobby mm -hmm. was a friend. He was the back, and he's oh, he was a friend from Brownsville because he, he grew mm -hmm. up in Van Dyke, um, and so I used to see him at the parties, you know, R.I.P. School mm -hmm. of Love and all that. And then um, um, he was he became a backup DJ for Red Alert at mm -hmm. the Latin Quarter. Gotcha. And we used to play the Latin Quarter faithfully, maybe like once every three weeks, something like that. Mm -hmm. It wasn't once a month; it was a little bit more frequent. And one day, Bobby was like, cause, because when we made Go Stetsa, it was to live drums. Gotcha. Bobby playing on that record. That's one of me and Delight's friends playing on that record. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, yo, man, you know I, I play the drums. Why don't we try to do it live with the drums? And if anybody know the Latin Quarter, you know that the Latin Quarter only had a little stage. So mm -hmm. he had to put his drums down on the dance floor. Wow. And we were up on the stage on top. Mm. But it worked like crazy. Mm. And I was like, yo, this is it. Like Bobby's in the group. You know what I mean? We're going mm. out with drummer now. That that's it. And then we once we start doing it, it actually gave us a little bit of props because sound men wasn't really used to rappers. Got you. Before and, you leave the yeah. Latin quarters thing, we gotta let the people know how real Latin quarters was. Because yeah. Slick Rick made a record called The Moment I Fear. That's my favorite Slick Rick record. Salute, facts. And he mentioned the Latin quarters and all yeah. that. And, and for what I'm hearing, um, dudes in the street that's a little older than me, they right. were saying Slick Rick was talking about some Brooklyn dudes that was of sticking course. them up. Of course. Yo, man, you know what they used to do with me in the Latin quarter, all them dudes? I'd be on the dance floor. I like to dance. I'd be on the <laughs> dance floor. I'd be dancing. They come up to me. They say, yo, Kareem, who you with? I'd be like, him, her, her, and him. Five minutes, get off the dance floor. Mm. We Five minutes, they tear it all up. They rob Dang. everybody. Dang. And that was pretty religiously, like, th the way they used to do it. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, the Brooklyn, Brooklyn was so, like, it was so crazy in Brooklyn. I remember when we played the Garden, right? Mm -hmm. And Doctrine Avenue basically took over the Garden and robbed everybody. Damn. They left the security guard bleeding in the elevator with, with his own handcuffs. <laughs> Yo, I don't mean to laugh, but damn. No, I mean, they, they, went, they went bananas. 
They went That's bananas. Bad. Like, it was it, us, like, I don't know about now, but us, mm -hmm. it was hard to deal with us, man, because we had a whole different. I try to tell people this all the time. I say, listen, you look at Tyson, you look at Zab Judah, you look at uh, Riddick Bo, we all from the same place. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Actually, Bo, me and Bo used to live in Nobu Drew Plaza at the same time. Oh, wow. If you look at them and you see this thing on them, that's the same thing I got on me. We size up everybody. Why? I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Maybe, maybe in our mind, because, you know, I say it in one of my records, you know, East New York growing up called Gunsmoke. That's what we used to call East New York, Gunsmoke. Mm. And it was, yo, we was, we was, we was wild, man. Like, we was real wild. And it was ill because I come from that. Mm -hmm. And so when I started rapping, it's like they gave me a pass and they was like, okay, Kareem rapping now. But if you ever tried to mess with Stetson Sonic, that was a problem. I seen mm. these dudes damn near almost shut the, the, the Latin Quarter down one time. Somebody said some heckling shit. Mm -hmm. and, and them dudes got, and, and it was crazy because they didn't, we was they own. You know what I mean? And so they was, you know, it was like, yo, Stetson Sonic is our own. I, I, I don't know if we was the first street group because I don't know nothing about the Bronx in Manhattan. Gotcha. So I don't know nothing about Modi's background. Uh, uh, that's Manhattan. Um, Melly Mel's background, that's the Bronx. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't know nothing about their background. I don't know mm -hmm. what they come out of, but we came out of the streets. Mm. Yeah, we adopted Prince Paul, who was from Long Island, but we came mm -hmm. out of them streets. So the street really sure. related to us on that level, which takes me to a, a recent point. I try to explain to the young people, you don't have to try to rap hard for the street to back you up. Yeah. You got to be real that's it and they don't they don't care they don't care about that they they was they never asked me yo man make sure you rep us man make sure you saying this man mm -hmm. it wasn't about that it was that they was respectful that we were trying to do something different with our lives got you you know what i mean and, and mm -hmm. for that it wasn't no paid protection or nothing like that like some people i know it wasn't no paid protection it mm. was just that you know, daddy on him is part of us. Mm. You know? so, gotcha. gotcha. That's what's up. So take me to y'all getting the deal. How did y'all get the deal? So we won the contest to get the deal. A contest? Like a rap yeah, contest? Rap contest. All we ever did was enter rap contest. Mm. There was a bunch of rap contests. We kept in the rap contest. And Delight, I love the way Delight tells the story. He tells it well. That mm. we always kept coming in second place. Oh, wow. And it was like, you know, I remember one time we did a rap contest. We thought it was unfair. I mm. left. The light was staying with me. I'll never forget. We went to the Roxy. We did a rap contest. Mm. On that rap contest, Busy B was on that rap contest. Say word. And, and Dougie Fresh and Slick Rick was on that rap contest. Nah, say, say word. Now, we like, first of all, we didn't know mm. who Ricky was, but we knew who Doug was. And we gotcha. knew who Busy was. So mm -hmm. we was like, how do these guys who are veterans in the craft, you know, mm -hmm. much more veteran than us, mm -hmm. even get in this rap contest? They was so, like riggers. That was I, like riggers. Yeah, so I was like, <laughs> I left. I um, left. Wow. And, and the light stayed. Uh -huh. And when the light came back, because he was staying with me and Noble Drew at that time, he came back. And I woke up, he woke me up, and I was like, man, and I still was going off, you know, mm -hmm. it, and this nigga threw was like $333 in my face. Sick so word. Split it three ways. Mm. They made it a three-way tie between it us. Was, it, it was a $1,000. Um, it was a $1,000. Grand, grand prize. Yeah. Gotcha. But that wasn't the one we won for the mm -hmm. contest. We, Mr. Magic, God bless the dead did a, 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 a borough-wide contest. It was going all around, every borough. Oh, wow. and, and it culminated in Coney Island. Mm. And when we won that one, it was for three, it was three labels was involved. All three labels. We won first, second, and third prize. Put it that way. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And it was three labels. It was Sugar Hill Records, Tommy Boy Records, mm. and um, what's uh, what the poem was like? Um... Uh, the boy from Philly, his, his, his the youngster's father. It'll come that's, that's my homie. Pop uh, it was Pop Art. 
Yep, pop yep. art. Shout out to um, Karan and um, yeah, the youngsters. They signed, you know, um, like. they signed Salt and Pepper first. Yep, facts. Right. So, Lawrence, Lawrence, what's his last name? Goodman? Lawrence, yep. first name, Goodman. right? So we didn't want to go with Lawrence and them. I mean, hindsight. Why, why not? Why not? I mean, mm -hmm. it wasn't that. It was, it was the weighing and judging. Sugar Hill was the first prize. We actually went up to Sugar Hill, but mm -hmm. the contract was so dirty that we took it down. We Damn. rolled with Tommy Boy because they had a little bit more experience with the hip hop. Gotcha. They already did a Jazzy Five record. They had already did Planet Rock. They had a break dancer. Honestly, I tell people this all the time. Even their logo played a part in our signing. Mm. Cause they had a break dancer on the logo. That's you know a fact. I mean? So we felt that they might have knew a little bit more about hip hop. So that's why we that's why we went with, with, with them. Dope. So now that Sugar Hill contract, could you do you remember exactly I remember what made it, dirty? Four, it was four points wholesale. Which meant that we would only get two points on the on on the records, Dang. Which, which was atrocious, right? Mm. And it, it it was just a bad contract. And 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 I tell this story all mm. the time. They set it up for us. They staged this meeting. You know, we went up mm. to Sugar Hill, and the Furious Five is there with a bunch of Benzes. Mm. I guess they must have leased it for them. Joey's mm. there. I know Joey remember this. Joey Robinson is there. The Toyota mm. Supra was the hot car then. Yes, sir. He, clean, he cleaning his Supra. Mm -hmm. Right? The, they up there playing Frisbee in the parking lot. <laughs> and then Melly Mel comes from the back with two bras underneath his arms. Wow. Yo, what's up, daddy? Yo. Then Joey Robinson Sr. drives in with a, a, a convertible Benz. Cause they, set, had they set up the scenery. They set yeah, up the scenery. They, they had two campuses, so that was a campus mm -hmm. down there. But now they said, "Oh, drive up the hill to meet Miss uh -huh. Rob." That's mm -hmm. Silver Robinson. Now we uh -huh. drive up the hill to meet Miss Rob. We go in the studio. She's working on something. I mm -hmm. swear to me, I, I say this: the guys ain't gotta, um, I, I, you know, agree. I uh -huh. felt like her Rolls Royce keys were strategically placed on a desk where we could see them. Wow. You know what I mean? And 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 we sitting behind her. She's she's looking at the guy on the board and we sitting in the chairs behind and all she mm -hmm. kept turning around saying, The kids was raving about you. The kids was raving about you. So we sat sat there for and it was making something whack. I don't even remember what it was. <laughs> I think Sugar Hill records made more whack records than they made good records. Because they Dang. made a lot of records. I, I didn't know. I only remember the impressive. good stuff. Yeah. It was a lot. But anyway, mm -hmm. um, and, and we left. But then when the contract came back, it was four points wholesale. We was like, what is this? And mm -hmm. so we didn't take we didn't take the contract. Got you. Yep. So now with the Tommy Boy deal, what made you sign the deal? What was intriguing about that deal? Because outside of nothing, them, in, they, not, they, not, they, nothing, 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 nothing special. The, okay. the intriguing part was we we got signed. Got you. That was the intriguing got part. You. We got a record deal. Got you. You know what I mean? The record mm -hmm. deal. And then we felt, like I said, they had already did the Jazzy Five. They had already did Planet Rock for Bambada. So we felt they was going to know a little bit more about hip hop. And we were happy that we was actually had a deal that we was going to actually put out a record. Because, I mean, you know, prior to that, we had been we had been doing these contests, a few shows around the country, um, not mm -hmm. country, a few shows around the city. And, and we, we got good response at the time. Because mm. Sonic is a a stage band first. Gotcha. You know, we mm -hmm. we we not really we we had to learn how to record. Mm. So we're not mm. really studio now we are, but we're not mm. really studio cats. We was really live performance cats. We know mm. how to put that thing down on stage. And so, so we was doing that all around the city. Whenever they gotcha. was opening for us, we get in, we get in there, we rock. We killed the Harlem State Building, a bunch of stuff. I'm talking about way mm. before we had a record. You know what mm. I mean? So mm. we were just happy that we could have something that was our own. Because other than that, we were just doing what, you know, what we call routines. Gotcha. You know? Now, let me, let me ask you this, though. Um, now, when you signed the deal, 
did that include your having a hundred percent of your publishing or the label? It was fifty. It was fifty fifty. T girl had fifty percent. We had fifty percent. Now, and, for how long? Um, for the entirety of the contract. Um, wow. um, we were told by the lawyers that we were using that that was a fair deal. You know, mm -hmm. we didn't know. I'm, I, I'll be brutally mm -hmm. honest. We mm -hmm. knew nothing about business or nothing. It was our lawyers that told us this Sugar Hill deal is just, you know what I mean? But mm -hmm. we didn't know anything about the legal side of anything. Got you. And I think we were just gully and gun ho about mm -hmm. signing and it wasn't, it was old school. I mean, it's, 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 we talk in 84. So this is hip hop and it's it's not really the very beginning of it, but it's close mm -hmm. to the beginning. So, you know, we are, when I say we now, I'm not talking about just that. I'm talking about all the hip hop. We're, we're now getting our footing. You know what I mean? We're just getting our footing. We're learning the, the you know, we're learning the things that, you know, are happening. And the mm -hmm. part is it's kind of not in our mind. You know, gotcha. for the records and the shows and all of that, that's in our mind. Gotcha. Gotcha. Now, I want to get this out the way. Right. Because you said something, I want to say, four or five years ago. Right. Sent, it sent shockwaves through the industry. Right. Because nobody has ever said right. anything about Rock Kim the God, right. right? Right. And the line that you said was, um, Rakim told the biggest lie in hip hop. That's what I said. Right? Now, you explained yourself, but I want to get to the origin. But for, for those who haven't heard why why you said what you said, could you explain that? I said because Rakim said it ain't where you from, it's where you at. Mm -hmm. And hip hop has always been about location. Always. Fact. Farface is in Houston. Luke is in Miami. Brain yes, super from LA. Mm -hmm. That's a Sonic, Houdini, the Fat Boy, uh, the, the the Brooklyn Bad Boys, R.I.P.T. Funk. Mm -hmm. I could go on and on. Biggie, Jay Z. We from Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. And whenever we did something, we always rep where we were. Correct. So that concept, maybe, like I said, I, I, I've said, it, I've even said it this way. I said, I told people, maybe I'm misunderstanding what he's saying. You know what I'm saying? Maybe he's saying something I think he ain't saying. But if Yo. I take it as that line, mm -hmm. it ain't where you from, it's where you at, that's a lie. Now, that, that's a hip-hop lie right there. I want to interject right there because okay. you saying what you saying and right. you correct. Everybody who came out from the five boroughs was right. definitely bragging where they from. Yeah. Especially Brooklyn. Especially you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I I think really Brooklyn to me was on that harder than anybody. Probably, right? And I yeah. felt a lot of boroughs always felt the way because let's be real, Brooklyn always gave it up. Yeah, we bullies. Uh, yeah, we, we kept it gully. Yeah, yeah, from, from the gate. Yeah, from the gate. Now, when you said that, I was thinking to myself earlier. I'm like, damn. And we're gonna get to it. We're gonna get to the part if it's personal or not. Right. But, Daddy O probably felt like, hold on, are you coming at Brooklyn saying that line like that? No, 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 okay. no. It's something that I thought about for a long time. And uh -huh. and it's not personal at all. But okay. the thing is, the thing is, when I, I, I don't know if I ever did have a filter, but mm -hmm. let's just think about later on in my life when I might say when my filter dissipated. Gotcha. You know, when the, veil, when the veil moved out the way. Then I start mm -hmm. looking at a lot of things, right? Because what brings me to kind of conclusions is how I rap right now. Got you. And so I, I, I thought about it, and I said, damn, if Jimi Hendrix was alive, would he be saying, I'm not going to do nothing new, man. Just go listen to Purple Haze. You know what I'm like. Or if Miles Davis mm -hmm. was alive, would he say, man, I ain't got to do nothing new. Just go listen to Bitches Brew. Mm. Anybody worth they talk in music gets better over time. That's a fact. 
and 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 my peers sickened me with that. Mm. At this point, right now, the type of shit Rock Kim should be making and any other making, it should be blowing everybody out of the water. Mm. I got you. They I agree. With you. Have Kendrick in their mouth. They shouldn't even have J. Cole in their mouth. And I'm not saying those guys are not good, but they mm. small fries to my mm. heroes, which Rock Kim mm. has be one. Rakim's one of my heroes. Melly Mel's one of my heroes. Big Daddy Kane's right. one of my heroes. I could go on and on. Mm -hmm. But the issue is, what happened? Well, let me ask you this. You think because Rakim was the first putting 5% lessons in the records that he get an automatic pass? For being no, the they just no I don't think that. I think he gets an automatic pass because the thing that Rakim does and did is unparalleled. Facts. No, no, fact. That that style that he came out with, with that monotone and, and connecting one sentence to the other, none of us was doing that. We didn't even Facts. know what we were left. I was in the Latin Quarter. Mm. Eric B came in. Uh, 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 the, uh, the, uh, uh, um, God bless the dead. The original Fifty Cent was alive. The whole fake paid him for. And Aunt Live. God bless Aunt Live. Mm. Um, 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 Supreme Magnetic. All of them was there with Eric, and they all came in, and they just stood with a bunch of jewelry on. They just stood on the floor in the Latin Quarter. I'm out there. <clears> there. I'm always out there dancing and all of that, and this record came on. <laughs> and we were like, first of all, the sound was like, what the hell? But when mm. we heard that turn up the mic, we was like, what the? Wow. And Red Alert played it three times in a row. Rakim tone always been money, especially yeah. back then. Yeah. And, and, and the wordplay, the lyrics always been phenomenal. All of that. And so, then also, he was always flop. The yeah, lawsuits, yeah. the jury. Yeah, so, so he got so, the whole package. Yeah, so I think mm -hmm. I think what he did was unparalleled. The thing wow. that bothers me with my peers now, and I say it all the time because mm -hmm. my dream. Like I'm, I'm talking to Paz K right now. My dream is the A and R record, but my oh, dream, again. Yeah. my dream is the A and R records for all of my peers. Mm. I'm, I, you know, dope. I want to make the new Rock Kim record. I don't want to produce it. I know who should. I want to make the new Big Daddy mm. Kane record. I want to make the new. Um, Go back. I want to make records uh -huh. on all my peers. I just want to A and R. I don't have to produce them. I can, mm. but I don't want to. But I want to make the new Eric B and Rakim record. Yes, I said Eric B and Rakim. I want to make the new. I even want to make a Houdini record with Jalil. And 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 I don't know if 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 if, if we're gonna get Doc Ice to do the other part. We mm. can. If not, it's a Houdini record featuring Jalil. Yeah, fact. You understand what I'm trying to say? But I I don't feel. I feel like we are what's wrong with hip hop. Mm. Fact. Rest and what I mean by that is. What I mean by that is this. I seen something happen the other day with the Philadelphia 76ers. Mm. You know, James Harden is on the Sixers now. Okay. He's not going to play till after today, after the All-Star break and all that, right? I think he played Monday. So. I forgot today was All-Star. Yeah, yeah. So listen, listen what happened, bro. Mm -hmm. The young boy, the young guard, I forget his name. The young guard is out there. He already plays well. Mm -hmm. All right? But then you see the actually the, the friggin' The the friggin' um reporters I'm not report I say well, I'm old the the you know the the press sees the the conversation happening between the young boy and James Harden and Harden is like duh, 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 duh. but it's not mean shit it's like you know the young boy goes out and scores twelve fucking unanswered points right after he talks to Harden mm. you understand what I'm trying to say yeah, yeah. my point is we are what's wrong with hip hop because who's giving J Cole advice. Who's giving Kendrick advice? Who's giving Young Thug advice? Who's giving... We're absent. Mm. We're like absentee fathers. I tell people all the time, if 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 Young Thug ain't my son, then whose son is he? Travis mm. Tritt's son? Gotcha. Bob Marley's son? Well, let me ask you this. I feel like the OGs, not you, because I right. love the way you give it up in interviews. I feel like the pioneers that came before the J. Coles and the right. Kendricks and all that, disconnected themselves from the upper new class. You know what they I'm saying? They did. They did. And 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 but there's no sense to it. Mm. There's no rhyme or reason to it. It makes us 
like them R&B people the way they used to deal with us. Got Yo, it. they used to hate us, MREC. I remember one time we did a show with Melissa Morgan. We had to blow her ass out the water because she just hated that we were rappers. Wow. Now it's all good. And she see us and hug us and all that. But back then, Luther hated us. Whitney hated us. They hated us, bro. Mm. And, 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 and when we do that, it's, it's the same attitude. Got you. Well, look, I think you should break the ice. I mean, you you are because you mentioned it in, in numerous interviews, right? Did you re did you reach out to J Cole or Kendrick or any one of those? I haven't yet. Mm -hmm. Um, my my plan is I would. It's in the future because we're working on self destruction too. Oh, okay. and so my I, and so my idea for self destruction too doesn't really have any old people involved, mm. and particularly like not that kind of way. So what, you know what I mean? You got in mind. For self destruction. So my first record is um so it's gotta be a series of records because it's too many people. Gotcha. So my first my first I only have the first one, which is myself, Chuck D, Big Crit, West Side Boogie, and Toby and Wigway. Wow. Mm -hmm. And Toby's producing and we're gonna do the video like have you ever seen Toby's videos? We're gonna do it like that. Mm -hmm. So that's my first record. I'm looking to line up my other records because the first thing I did is go out and get beats. Gotcha. So I got a phenomenal record from DJ Premier. Oh, salute to Premier. And, wow. And I know who I want on that record, too. Mm. I want five spitters. 3D Nati, Talib mm. Kweli, LL Cool J, Papoose, and Black Thought. That's who I want on Ooh. that Premier record. That's a serious record right there. Yeah. Ooh. And then um, and then I got a large professor record that I want Griselda on. Like, I, I, I got, you know, that's my, that's my headspace. Right. The, the only thing I'm going to do, and that's why, you know, some people going to have to step it up. I, I want to use all the young people, but you got to be able to be that. You got to be that that spitter. Gotcha. Because I, I don't think we don't translate past the, the foxes and the CNNs if we can't rap. Mm. You know what I mean? Because they only going to accept it if it's if, if it's if it's pristine. They only going to accept it. Because artistically, it's put together that way. Yes, yes, sir. You know, when you do a man, I, I say this to the gospel people all the time, especially the, um, a lot of the gospel rappers. I said, man, y'all got to rap first. Mm. And that got nothing to do with, well, you know, uh, um, 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 the message that you got to do. But it, it, yeah. just, because, just because you saying it, you gotta if you nice. say it, you yeah, if you nice. say it whack, we ain't with you. Yeah. Ain't nobody with you. You know what I'm saying? Right. So exactly, and so that's that's the only um, prerequisite that I have is that is that the people are spitting. So that's why spitters always come to my mind. Got you. Do me a yeah. favor, man. I'm gonna see your whole face if you can, because okay. we we only seeing you. We got your chin cut off. Hmm. Wait, let me see. Right now, yep. I think right there. That's per perfect. All right. Hold on. Hold on. All right. There we go. My joint is off now. Hold on. Yeah. I yeah. You good. good now. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So now you mentioned self destruction. Let's go to the original. Right. right. I seen one of your interviews. I think it was on Hot eighty seven, and um, you mentioned why LL Cool J wasn't on self destruction the original. Right. Right. He. He. Yeah. He said the beat was whack. Wow. Yeah. He said the beat was whack. He said people haven't heard me in a long time. And you think I'm gonna come back on that beat? I'm not. Damn. Damn. And and, and let me and, and and let me say this in support of who produced that? D nice. D nice. Okay. Let me say this in support of D nice. Mm -hmm. D nice was so smart because we all originally just rapped to the James Brown loop, the doom 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 doom. So everybody rapped to that. D nice went back after and added. Like how he dropped in the 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 the, the talking all that jazz remix on me and Wise part, mm -hmm. and how he dropped a couple of he went yeah, back cool. and moved those things, moved that Public Enemy piece. He moved, he went back and added stuff to it. But in the beginning, we all just rapped to that loop. Gotcha. So maybe if LL knew, he probably would have you know used you know some kind of LL kind of yeah. record in his place. But just 
to the James Brown loop, he wasn't with that. Mm. But you also mentioned um, LL writing for um, Queen Lab Light. Yeah, and no, it was Light. Oh, he wrote for Light. Light. It was Light. It was Light's Light. part. Light. Well, I was right there when he did it. I was right there when he did it. Light had a good rhyme. But the rhyme that she had was all statistics. Gotcha. One out of three kids, blah, 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 da, 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 blah, blah, blah. It wasn't a whack rhyme. Mm. But it wasn't that shit. Gotcha. And LL grabbed the pen and was like, I, I remember when he said, Funky Fresh man, to dress man, to party. And he walking around with the pad and he just wrote the rhyme. Wow, that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? So at that time, did anybody ever write for MC Light? You know? No. Wow. No. I don't think since then, or I don't think before then or since then, anybody's ever written for Light. Mm, that's yeah, Light, Light, Light is the real, yo, Light. She the real, she the genuine article, bro. She nah, really nah. is. She really is. Now she she definitely is one of my favorites from from back then. You know. Right, right. You know, salute to um Roxanne Shantae. Oh yeah, yeah, Shantae the homie. That's the homie. That's, yeah, that's definitely the homie. Also, um, speaking of MC Light, it leads right into this segue. Audio two. Right. You produced um top billing. Top billing. Yeah. And you said that was like kind of like a mistake at first, right? Oh, top of the world, a mistake. So, 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 so let me let me clear <laughs> let me clear the air about production for a minute. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, when people produce music, they might also be the writer. Got you. And a lot of that happened since electronic instruments came into play. Mm. Prior to this electronic movement, drum machines, synthesizers, etc. People were playing instruments so the producer might have not written any of that. Mm. But he was the one to arrange it and make it into a song. Gotcha. Put it together and that's what got it on the radio. Because he would know where the brakes need to go, how it needs to be balanced, all of those predict particular things. I've been a producer in both ways. Mm. I've been a producer where I wrote, I like I produced Jeffrey Osborne, I wrote and played wow. everything. So I wrote the whole song mm. and I played every instrument. Mm. But I've also been a producer like me producing Top Billing where I didn't write Top Billing. Part of it was, the lyrics was written by Milk. Mm -hmm. The music wrote itself and this is how. Mm. I'm in I, 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 I love the audio too. Because the light turned me on to this record they make called I Love Cherries. Okay. I finally got to hear I Love Cherries. And I said, wow, this is dope. The Stetson Sonic had a release party for our On Fire album in the Michael Todd room of the Palladium. And everybody came out. Mm. Light was there. Everybody was there. I met Milk and them there and pulled Milk and told Milk. If you ever want somebody to produce you, I will. Got you. Because I like what y'all do. So I was in the studio with them making a record that really basically had the same kind of blanket as I Like, I like Cherries. It was called Make It Funky. Mm. And, and, and Milk and them had a, a little bit of equipment. I was out in Staten Island. That's when they used to live out in Staten Island. The studio was in the basement. And they had a, a, a little bit of equipment. Mm -hmm. um, they had an SB-12. This is the SB-12 before the SB-1200, before any of that. So the sample time on the SB-12 might have been five seconds. It might have been less. I think it was very little. Yeah, a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. Milk, anybody, all of us, or everybody, even to this day, kind of, always been impressed by Impeach the President. I mean, we've been so impressed by Impeach the President that Aaron Fuchs went out and bought the publishing rights. Damn. So he owns Impeach the President now. Wow. So every time somebody uses it, Aaron Fuchs gets paid. That's crazy. That's how smart he was, right? Yeah, so we go upstairs to have a conversation, Nat Robinson, which is the dad, Gizmo, and me. Milk stays downstairs. Milk comes upstairs, runs upstairs. Like I say all the time, like it was a fire in the studio or some shit. <laughs> we run downstairs. He hits play and raps the whole song that you hear right now. What you mean, freestyled it? No, I mean, he must have wrote it when he was down there. Okay. Wow. But then he raps the whole song. 
And so when it ends, we all looking at him, and he think we looking at him because it's whack. Mm -hmm. But we saying, damn, that's crazy. Mm. And what happened was he tried to take and piece the president and put it in the drum machine. Mm -hmm. It was my drum pattern for make it funky. And that's that came out to be top building. Wow, that's crazy. That's the because you remember back in the day when we used to program drum machines, mm -hmm. we used to do them in song format. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? You program it, then this is the chorus part and all that. So that's what it does. A lot of people don't even know. If you listen to Top Billing, a lot of people don't even notice that Top Billing doesn't do the same thing over and over. It has a, a lot of people think it's just, yeah, it, it's, it's little slips because mm -hmm. that's when it would change to the chorus part or the, or the bridge part. That's and then the, the, other, the other cool thing about Top Billing was we recorded it right then and there. They had a four track. We recorded it right then and there, and they said, okay, we're going to go in the big studio and make it. I said, no, we're going to keep it right here on the four track. I had heard him master it right from the four track. Wow. You know what I mean? Right. And it worked out like a plan. That's how I know plans and music work, because I told him, I said, listen, this is what we're going to do. We're going to put this record out and make it funky. We're going to put Top Billing on the B side. Mm. We are not going to even ever talk about Top Billing, ever. Mm. All we're going to do, we're going to do a video to make it funky. We're going to promote Make It Funky. And Red Alert and all these guys are going to think they found the record. They said, should we make it longer, Daddy-O? I said, absolutely not. We are the time of a PSA. Do you know how many plays we're going to get on the radio with this thing? It's mm. going to be twice the amount as any rapper right now. Because every rapper's record is four and a half, five minutes. Okay? We got a two-minute record. Hold and on. Audio 2 was... I it's mean, about top billing was two minutes. It's about two minutes, yeah. Wow. It's, it's, so, 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 and it all worked out. Red Alert them, thought they found it. They start playing it, got on the radio. You was hearing top billing every hour. That's crazy. <laughs> Fact. That was one of my favorite records in the party when I was mad young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Living in Albany Projects. Yeah, yeah. Year. Now, Milk said something on the record. Um, Shots to my man Sham. We we still to this day is baffled about right he said suckers that's down with me what, what was that about suckers that's down with knee oh knee he's talking about a knee butt oh, okay okay Got he it. asked me should it's so funny that you say that because he asked me should he change the line and mm -hmm. i said no i said no but Got if you it. listen to it he says suckers that's down with knee that's down with knee okay got you I'm glad you cleared the air with that because yeah. me and my homie Shan was like, damn, why would he say that? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that wasn't the first time somebody asked you that, right? No, no, no. Um, They used to ask all the time because people used to be like, I mean, they actually milked that more than they asked me. You know what I mean? But it was like, why would you say that? Like, yeah. Especially in that time, you know, that's that's a time where um fresh, you suckers, and you know, that's when we was calling everybody suckers. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, why you, would you <laughs> why would you say you suckers down with sucker, me? You're, you're, yeah, you basically call them the scum of the earth. Yeah, like, yo, you're right, you right. Like, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, right. Yeah. So yeah. So, so but yo, he said me. He said me. That's a clever dude there. Got you. But look, yeah. with with the top billing. It spawned a lot of other hits, and we got to get into right. that. Right. Real Love by Mary J. Blige. Right. Who was that produced by? That was Mark. God bless the dead. That was Marky D. Mark Prince Marky D? Prince Marky D, yes. They were. Him and Corey Rooney. Yeah, remember Mark and Corey had a, a, a huge run with Mariah, with a few other things, and they did the original Real Love. I came back and did the remix with the boom, 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 with Biggie on it. Got you. Well, that, was, but, that was where I, I'm, that's when I met Big. Got you. So now, but them sampling the original top billing, right? You get money from that, right? And publishing. Well, that. well, well. I got a line in one of my new songs that says, "Never did a pub. Nat still owe me money. They still owe me money." Oh, say word. Yeah, they still owe me money. I'll get it though. That's a lot of money. Yeah, it's a lot of money. Because Mary J. Blige, that was a single. No, one. no. The, the, the big one was the 50 Cent song. No, that's, I was going to get into that. Yeah, that was a big one. Mary J. Blige is big. Mary is big, but the, the I Get Money is bigger than that. Wow. Yeah. And, and, and there's a whole bunch of others that, you know what I'm saying, that might be like sitting under the radar. So, yeah, no, I'm going to get that money. 
I'm gonna get it. Man, you talking I, about that might be an easy ten million. It, maybe I I don't know. I mean, the publishing. Yeah, I mean the you know right. I'm trying to have a conversation with Nat now. I called him a few times. He didn't hit me back. I did speak to Milk, but when I talked to Milk, he said, "Hey, man, my pops got to deal with that. Like that's that's his thing." So I, I will, you know, what I'm saying I will. Like I'm I'm not. I'm not tripping about it, um, but, you know, in hindsight, that's what made me say, oh, you should go after it, because there's a lot of things I did that I didn't go after, but I did it. That's a little different because I produced it. It's in the Library of Congress with my name on it, all of that, but there's other things that I was, I've been involved with mm -hmm. that I didn't go after, but I, a lot of times I just didn't go after it because... I was getting my own, so I, I didn't look at them no way. Like, like when I used to do A and R for MCA Universal. Hold on, before you go there though, mm -hmm. I need to ask you. So when Mary J. Blige, well, when that record dropped, Real Love, right? Where was you at, and how did that make you feel? Did you know that was happening? Did um Prince Mark? No, know? no, no, no. Nobody, nobody told me. I mean, I was happy. I was happy because, you know, as a producer. And any producer worth his salt will tell you this. Mm -hmm. You always got in your head, you know, you always want to see something fresh and new. Always. All the time. And, 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 and there's just, I mean, you're going to die before you do everything you want to do. That's a fact. Like, I got an idea that I hope I do it, but for years, for 20 years, I've been wanting to, to, to merge the sounds of a violin and a scratch. Mm. Where you could go in between and you don't know which is which. Wow, that's deep. And there's a whole there's a whole bunch of ideas that I have like that. So when I'm seeing them bounce off a top villain with a piano, I'm like, that is clever. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And you mm. and, and and then you know we because you know, you know, no no disrespect to other producers, but rap produce like hip hop producers, whether we do an R and B records or not, mm -hmm. we we got a different take on everything. Yes, sir. It, it, it's kind of sky's the limit to us because of where we came from. So coming from um, nothing, really, right? Trying to make music Watch. out of two turntables and all of that. Coming from nothing, we are always enamored to make something out of nothing. That's a fact. So although all those instruments are there, we still trying to do other stuff. You know, you, we're not always calling a bass player. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. We're right. not always calling a drummer. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't, right? right. Because we're, we're messing around with sounds, and there's a lot of things that happen, maybe, maybe not as elusive as my top billing mistake, but there's a lot of things that happen for producers like that because we were, it was all experimental for us in the beginning. Yes, sir. I tell people all the time, until Russell and them came out with that Run DMC album, we didn't even know we could make a full rap album. Mm. If you listen to the Sugar Hill Gang rap album, they sing it on half and they rapping on half. Mm. Because ain't nobody know what to do. You yeah. understand what I'm trying to say? That's why our records were so long. Look at the original Rapper's Delight. That thing, eight, nine minutes long. Yeah, eight, nine minutes. That's yeah, exactly. you know what I mean? We didn't know what to do. Because when we were in the street, that's how long we were rap. So we didn't know what to do when we got in the studio. We didn't know how to make no it record. Wasn't no format. It wasn't we didn't have none. Yeah. So we so it was all experimental. So and that's just hip hop in general. But think about the producers. Now the producers are trying to figure out ways. So when finally the R and B people started respecting us enough, it was because of the sound. It was because of the sound that we were bringing. Because R and B producers, no disrespect to Babyface or none of them, wasn't bringing that sound. Mm. Mm. You know, they was making something t that sounded different. You know, listen right. to Bobby Brown's "Every Little Step." That's not how we sound. Whoa. You see, what I'm trying to say we sound different. Sometimes we more more gritty, slow about. Sometimes we putting things in reverse, like all types of stuff. So I was enamored when they did it, bro. I, mm. I nobody told me ahead of time. But I was enamored, but but because they did it and because it was top billing, Puff ain't got nothing to do with me and that, but he 
tapped me for the remix on purpose. Oh, word? Oh, salute. Yeah, he tapped me for the remix on purpose. He thought, you know, he thought that I already got my deal with him and everything, but he tapped me for the remix on purpose. That's real. Yeah. Yeah. Shouts to Diddy. That's, that's yeah, 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 yeah. He, he puffed through a lot of good stuff. He do some fucked up things too, but he do a lot of good things. That's what's up. And, and gotta salute him for doing that. Oh Reaching yeah, absolutely. Out to you directly and get absolutely. Bag. absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. When they get money, or the Fifty Cent joint, right? That's what it's called. Yeah, yeah. I get money. I get money. I think that's the name of it. Yeah. Where was you at when you first heard heard that joint? That I don't remember. I think I was in Seattle, though, because I was working for this label in Seattle. So I think I was in Seattle. Okay. And I think the first time I heard it was on a dance floor. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it was on the dance floor in Seattle. I was like, wow, that's dope. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I mean, because I, I got I got into 50, man, from Wingster. I was like, this kid got something. No, he definitely I mean, I, I got into him from How, how to Rob. I love that. You know what I'm saying? But when the Wingster record dropped, I was like, Oh, this kid. Nah, he got it. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of, it's kind of ill what he's doing. It's kind of fake southern, but it's dope. You know what I mean? And so, yeah, I think I was on, I was on the dance floor. I heard it on the dance floor in Seattle. Mm, that's crazy. Yeah. Remember that drop, and then they came back with the remix with uh, yeah. Jay Z, and who else was on it? Fifty and and Diddy. Yeah. They called crazy. it the Forbes remix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy. Crazy, I get money. Yeah. So that that's that's ill, man. Salute to you because yeah, yeah. Thank you, you, sir. You 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 kind of like responsible for those records as well. Well, one of the things I want to do in rec mm -hmm. is, um, you know how they do them um ancestry trees. Yes, sir. I, I want to do one of those. I got my man working on it for me now. That'd be where, dope. But where I'm at the top shit. Well, just with everything that came out of me, because technically Erica Badu's my granddaughter, because I put Keith Keith on the business. Technically, uh, D'Angelo's my grandson, because I put Keith on the business. Wow. Technically, um, India Irie is my great granddaughter, because I put Keith on the business. Me and Un started Junior Mafia, so everything that comes out of that, like it's so many things. Oh. I had hands in so much stuff. Now you got. You know it, what I mean? You got yeah, it. so I, I want to put that together just to kind of, you know, just to kind of show, like, I'm one of them dudes, you know, that that whole line about um, it ain't over till the, till the fat lady sing. I don't say it. Um, I say it ain't over till the fat lady sings, um, till the, till the, um, you, you know, till, till the thugs are first place. And the, and the, and 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 the, and the snitches get pinched. You know what I mean? Like I I mean because I know who we are, and I know we, I know we made life better. A lot of times people try to frown on people from the street, but I tell people all the time, all of them Thanksgivings and all of them. Who do you think was feeding the hood? Mm. You know, all of them Christmases. How you think Miss Mamie grandkids got them toys? That's a fact. Because it wasn't none of you dudes that go to college. It wasn't y'all. You say you care, kind of, and I get it, and I want to see you progress. But we never, it, it, if you see us, you ain't not one of us ever forget where we come from. Not that's one fact. of us. See, you know that's what I mean? the difference between, you know, that time, that right. from that too as well. Right, when right. When dudes was in the street getting money, they get yeah. back. Of to course. The that was in the community. Of course. But now these dudes, these so-called scammers or whatever, I be looking at dudes, they ain't throwing no bus trips. They ain't giving They're the back. worst. They're the worst, yo. They're the worst. But you know what? Those dudes and girls, because there's some girls too, mm -hmm. They, I tell this to my, I tell my wife this all the time. I said, you know, they always been there. Mm -hmm. But the problem, not the problem, but the issue right now is platforms like this, mm -hmm. Right. That now they got social media. Facts. You see what I'm trying to say? So so that's a different situation because they got social media, they could promote their bullshit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, sure. and and so that's a different situation. But I'm still I'm still hopeful that life moves in cycles, you know what I mean? And that some of that stuff will will calm down. Like just the phoniness. Cause we dealing with a lot of we dealing with a whole lot of that, and then it's tough, right? And I, I'm not gonna get totally racial, but 
it's tough when you black and you my age and you see the black movement being co-opted for other movements because in the beginning civil rights was just about me and my people and about a white water fountain and a colored water fountain and segregated buses and segregated schools Facts, gang. throwing everybody else in our pot for civil rights it's just not right wow. because we've basically been forgotten on that level now we are resilient people so ain't nothing gonna really i mean we're gonna we're gonna survive we we've proved that mm -hmm. And though you go to any hood, you go to Flint right now, you, you go to uh, 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 up, up in Boston, up the, and, and you go um, where Bobby Brown and them is from up in Boston, East New York, where me and you is from. Yes, um, forget Compton. Go to Watts. Um, mm -hmm. um, go to the Swatch in Atlanta. You see what we made of. Yes, sir. Liberty City in Miami. You see what we made of. We made of resilience. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of bullshit that goes on, but it's bullshit that goes on in the world, period. Yes, you know sir. what I mean? But the honesty that some of us hold is 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 unparalleled. Mm. Mm -hmm. I tell my friends all the time, I say most of my friends are either preachers or gangsters. Mm. And people say, what is, you know, how that relate? I said, the preacher got to keep his word because he going to get exposed if he don't. Mm. The gangster is the same. That's a fact. You understand what I'm saying? You don't you don't get to run no blocks or nothing if you if you don't if you're not honest. You tell somebody they're gonna get a bag, you tell them it's this much, you tell that's what you gotta do. You can't yep. now the bag come in and oh, that's you know what I mean? Then you're gonna lose all your credibility. Cat right. might not even do nothing to you, but you may not ever get anybody to work with you no more. Now I'm with you. you. Know what like, this, this whole thing, this this whole mentality of running running out on the plug right I'm like yo where the fuck that come where from? that come from like, where they, they do that like, at who <laughs> who does that like yo, you know what i'm saying it's a nasty error like even like the um like the ungratefulness is at an all-time yeah. high all-time high like it's no appreciation none you could put somebody on that was starving starving and they would say I was gonna get that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> they, they might have been starving right. for twenty years, fucked up. Right. And then the cocky ego shit. Yo, I was gonna and get on anyway. They they forget it's you that turned them on. Sometimes yeah. you be talking, yo. I know you go through this too. Sometimes you be yeah. talking to people and they go, "My man told me da 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 da," and you look at the dude and say, "Nigga, I'm the one that told you that." Exactly. They be forgetting it's you that even said yep. it. Yep. Facts, gang. Fat. That's crazy. That, that's crazy to me, nasty son. Nasty work out here. Daddy. Yeah, it is, man. It is. It is. Nasty work, but you know. But I got a few more questions, my brother. Okay. I want you to enjoy your um. You know, I don't know if you're watching the games because I I didn't even know they was on. The I, it might be. It might be um something like slam dunk or rookie yeah, might be on today. Tonight. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's on Saturday. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, you mentioned. Junior Mafia and actually right. producing them first, like right? before. Right. Me? No, Big was with us. Oh, okay. So yeah, Big was with us. That whole thing, meeting Big. So, and so the Junior Mafia. Shout out to Un man, Lance Un Rivera. He got a series coming out called Fulton Street. Fulton oh, Fulton Street. Yeah, and it's gonna show everything. Cause oh, when I saw the Un. when I saw the Biggie movie, not only the movie, but when I saw the documentary too, mm -hmm. I was like, where are we? Cause mm -hmm. all of us was there. Right, so I was like, "Where are we?" But that—that's a whole other story. But um, um, Un came to me one time and said, "Joe, you know them little niggas that be hanging around Biggie?" And I said, "Yeah." He said, "Man, I want to make a group out of them because mm. he always be talking about Junior Mafia. I want to make a group." I had the studio in the basement in in, in Clinton Hill and everything. He was like, "I was like, all right, cool." And he said, "And Big got this girl, this girl Kim, and she could rap. She probably the only one that could rap. But we mm. could teach the other ones to rap." And then Un is, a lot of people don't know Un's genius, but Un sat down with his man. We're still trying to find it right now, mm -hmm. the original poster. That's how I shopped it all around before we got to deal with Craig Callman. But that's why some of the A&R people in the business respect me to this day. Mm. Because they turned my Junior Mafia deal down. Wow. Um, but Un, 
un got with his man and his man did this illustration man i wish i could find it, it looked like a movie poster but the concept was big was a kingpin who got locked up he gave kim the keys as a lieutenant mm. and then everybody else came out of this other thing so klepto was by himself that was klep's thing he was a, a guy who steal um the snakes which is rayshawn and them they were like these dudes that's down with Big, but you don't know if they're going to cut his throat or do something, but they real mad gully. Mm. Then the Sixes, that was that was um, C's and Man in them, they were like kids, like, g g g kid, like you know, little gully kids. And then we had all these vignettes that we were going to produce, film vignettes that we were going to produce. Gotcha. Everything happened so fast, so we never got a chance to do it. Wow. But like the klepto one was klep is in this convertible with this girl and driving and the girl is just screaming you know she's arguing with him the whole time you don't never buy me nothing you and then he pulls over in the mall mm. parking lot and says wait here oh you got me waiting here i better not be here no long and then you see the clock then go around and then we get back he get back in the car then she start back with her bullshit. you don't never buy me nothing you see this nigga start pulling out Versace from underneath his thing and all of that. Mm. You know what I mean? And that wow. junior mafia. The 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 sixes joint was um you see Biggie going into a school and it's a pristine school. I mean mm. beautiful. And like a private school. And he go in there, he dressed up, he got his cane and stuff, and you know, he go in there the headmaster, you know how them rooms be looking with the with the um with the red leather couches and all yes, of that. Sir. He's sitting in the seat, and they said, "Well, Mr. Smalls, you know, um, you know, we wanted to bring you in, man, about your, you know, about your guys and stuff, your kids." And um, he says, "You know, well, what is it? What is it? Um, was the wing that I built for you guys not enough?" He says, "No." He says, "Are they are they failing in their classes?" Mm -hmm. And they're like, "He's like, no. They just this this other thing that they be doing around here." And um, Big said, "What is it?" He said, "Let me take you down the hall to show you." And so. You um, you walk down the hall and then you see the bathroom door. Even the bathroom door is like nice with a dope doorknob and everything. And you open up the door and you see tags in there. Junior Mafia for life. Da -da 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 -da. Boom. Junior Mafia. That's dope. You know what I'm saying? Then Kim, had, we had another one for Kim where um, um, Big is, or Big or somebody is in a casket and they all, you know, you see girls like, the hood shit, you know, like the Kevin Wolf funeral where mm -hmm. chicks is actually fighting, you know, once the nigga died. Like, I was the chick. No, you wasn't. Yeah. I was like that Got type it. of stuff. You had all this commotion. Then in the back, it, it's not big because I remember because we had Big behind her. In the back, the door opens up. So Biggie and Junior Mafia is behind Kim. She got her Jackie O going on with the, um, with the shades and the scarf around her head. She got one black rose and everything stops and she walks down the aisle. And, and put a black rose on the on the casket. Wow! And he unrolled a bunch of them. Like it, yo, it was so crazy, that's bro. Ill, because basically you saying like everybody from Junior Mafia had their own promo campaign. Oh yeah, that's oh yeah. What, yo, but the, where we were, even the album. If you look the album cover, the album cover is about a story of of something that happened with Ray Sean, and that's why he's in the hospital bed and all of that. But it's like we never really got a chance. To expose any of that because that stuff happened so fast. So and then even this, what what was the chemistry between you and Biggie like in terms of um making Junior Mafia the group? Like once Un said to you he want to make them into a group, then Biggie, I guess he was doing the writing and the you know I guess the. Well, ben, I, I I'll be brutally honest with you, brother. I keep it a buck. Big would do whatever Un said. Oh wow. There was no there, 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 that that wasn't even a thing. So that was un thing. That was un thing. Yeah. The wow. only the only thing Big had to do with Junior Mafia is he used to shout it on all the oh, stuff he said. Junior Mafia. But to him, that just meant the guys that was around him. My homies. My crew. Yeah. Yeah. But I was like, we can make this into something. Wow. Un is a genius. He don't get it. No, he, yo, the shit this the still the shit that's in his head. Brother, if it ever gets out, I'm telling you, I, I, again, it's not over yet, so I just, you know, I hope for the future, but Un, to me, is just good a director as anybody that I know. Mm. 
because his vision is so, you know, that's the one thing I love is where I don't care what kind of business I, I've worked in software, wherever. If I'm working with anyone and they have vision, it, it just warms me because they know where they're going with it. Right. And this guy is a real visionary, B. Definitely. Like he's the, I tell people all the time, look at it, man. Let's keep it real. First time you see big in the press is when the Source magazine, no, not the Source, Vibe, because Dream wrote the article. Vibe magazine has that next article. Now Vibe, if they are physical, but I know the last time when they was physical, the next article they did was a full page. The next article used to be a side slot mm. in Vibe. And you see Biggie in there, and he got on a hoodie with no strings in it. The string ain't even in the hood. <laughs> and they calling him, I think, the mayor of New York or something like that. Mm -hmm. Right? I always tell people, and this is a fact, Big rapped about what was in Un's closet. Wow. Who'd you down to the socks and all of that? That's all Un. Wow. Un was the first person I ever seen. Before they set it down south, I didn't know what popping tags was. Mm. You go to this nigga house, this nigga got knits and all this shit. All this shit got tags on it. Wow. Like he got mad shit that he never wore. I'm like, and just his brother just too. I'm like, who does you niggas is something? And that's how I met them. Because just used to live next door to me. Got you. And that's how I met everybody. I met him and then I met Un through Just and you know, all of that kind of stuff. But that whole being fly, listen to me. We went to Faith Newman, who's still my girl to this day. Who we went to Faith Newman at Columbia when she was putting out Nas. We show her the Junior Mafia shit. She passed on it. Mm. But she said, oh, I want y'all to see this new um, this new Nas video. I think it was hard to tell. Okay. And um, I said, why you got him in them clothes? Dang. And she said, what do you mean? She said, first of all, he's a handsome kid and you got a hat all the way down to here. That doesn't make sense with the kid being handsome. And then why is he wearing those clothes? He should be wearing something different. She said, like, like cool G or something like that. Kids are not gonna do that. Mm. Wow. So literally, Unlance Rivera is responsible for hip hop being fancy. Because mm. if Un never in entered the game, Biggie doesn't go fancy, and everybody looks like Andre Three Thousand. That would no. be. It. That's crazy. You said that because people was giving the credit to Puff dressing big like that. Mm -mm. Puff Puff don't dress like that. To this day, he don't dress like that. He. He's one of us on one side. On the other side, Puff is not one of us like that. Mm. That Brooklyn shit, man, when we do it, anybody, ask the guards. Ask the guards about the rallies back in the days when the Brooklyn guys come to the rallies. Mm. We got on green valleys and green tailor-made pants. What? That's us, man. Look at AZ, man. I, yo, I knew AZ when he was a little boy, knee-high to a duck's ass, two and a half years old. I seen him when he was born. We used to shoot oh, dice. Which, which, which AZ you talking about? Not, 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 um, not, not the real AZ. Okay, you talking about not, the, rapper AZ from the rapper AZ, right? That's my little man. Okay. I knew AZ since he was a little boy. Mm. His mother always dressed him like us when he was three. Wow! If she could find Playboys for him, she would put them on him. If she could find British Walkers for the little kid, she would put him on him. This boy been fly his whole life. He don't even know how to not be fly, bro. Mm. He really don't. I'm telling you, he, AZ has no idea what it's like to be bummy. He doesn't. I agree. I That's us, bummy. man. I that's us. That's, that's how we are. That's that Brooklyn. I'm telling you, that's that Brooklyn, man. Yeah. yeah. I tell you, somebody else gonna sleep on. Them Houdini boys, when we used to be on the road with them, the clothes that they used to have on, crazy. Mm -hmm. And they would come on stage with their sneakers and then tell Stretch and um, um, Cliff to go to the back. They go to the back and put their ballies on. Like, it, yo, man, we always been that. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? We always, always been that, man. You know what I mean? Like, that's one thing I always say to these people. I say, look, man, I'm not against nothing designer. I do a bunch of designer. But when I was 17, I had tailor-made pants. Mm. that we made from scratch. We drew them on a piece of paper. We went to Moon. 
who was right over there near the Marcy Projects, and he made he made our pants. Wow. You understand that y'all niggas is not fly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're not fly. We have sweat. Talk we always him. had hard bottoms. They don't. They don't. Talk yo, we him. always had hard bottom shoes. We used to go to Bostonia and get the black on black suede. I'm talking about little kids, mad dressed up, mm. Fred Layton knits. Like that was us. Mm. Y'all, and and you know, and I don't. Sometimes I don't really get the slop. Like some of this sloppy that they do now. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest with you. The the dudes that claim they fly right now, yeah, I be like, yo, that's not that's not that's dip. Not fly. We, remember, we 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 ran with the word dip. They use the word drip. I'm yeah, like, yeah. Yo, <laughs> right. However you want to spit it, that drip right. ain't, ain't ain't what it is. It's not. It's not. It's not but but they is. don't know. They don't know it from childhood. They know it from earnings. Mm -hmm. So it's like they you know they get money and then they try to figure out what they're gonna buy. Facts. You know what I'm trying to say? But they don't know it the way we knew it. Like, I, like I'm talking about AZ. Like, AZ knew it since he was a kid. Yeah. So that, that, that it, it stayed with And that was the whole thing. And that, that's why, that's the same reason I keep saying, if anybody ever asks me, what's wrong with hip hop? I say it's us. Because mm -hmm. the elders have to have a place. You never see great societies, great countries, great movements move without elders. Mm -hmm. That's dick. You know what I'm saying? It's always somebody to go and pin, pin out. No, that's not the way to go. Yeah, that I don't care if he's blind and in the back of the stage, coach. Mm -hmm. He still will say, smell around and say, oh, we in Wyoming? Okay, we're going to have to keep staying to the west in Wyoming because I remember those Cherokees are on the right side. Mm. You see what I'm trying to say? But, yes, but, but, you know, that elder thing, even us. You know, we had that. Mm. You know, we had people. Sometimes our elders happen to be younger than technical elders, but they were at least people that did what we do before us. Yes, sir. I remember Melly Mel giving me advice. I remember Dougie Fresh giving me advice. Mm. I remember Doug did what, what Doug did with me one time. It was so crazy, right? We had did the show at the Apollo, and it was filmed. I think Bobby still got the tape. And, um... I was in Uptown, I don't know what I was doing, but Doug called me from his, I didn't know he lived on that block, he called me from his window. I mm. said, yo, what's up? He said, yo, Daniel, come upstairs for a minute. And he sat me down in this room and played a videotape of me mm. performing at the Apollo. Wow. And everything, like the, the because we had to do it again and all of that. Mm. And he said, look, look, now you're angry. Now you're this, now you're that. And he broke down to me how I lost my cool, and that's why the show didn't turn out the way it should have. Mm. He analyzed your tapes, like how, <laughs> like how basketball teams look look yep. at the tapes. Yeah, wow. and so even though I'm older than Doug by a couple of years, he's still my elder in the sport. Mm. You know what I mean? And so that is. Like, like when we came up there, man, I'll tell you about the Coney Island thing. When we came up stage at Coney Island, Mel and them was there. Because, you know, Mel and them had a great relationship with Mr. Magic and them. Yes, and he, he said to me, he said, man, that's how you do it, daddy. Yo, you do just like me. You get a crowd 50% and you take 50% for yourself. Well, Melly Mel taught me if you do a show and they not involved, you an asshole. Mm. That's why anybody worth they salt when they first come on stage is going to have a crowd and put their hands in the air, make some noise, something. You got to get them involved. Got to keep exactly. Them involved. Mm -hmm. But so, you, you understand what I'm trying to say? So, mm -hmm. so, so without that presence for some of these young people that's coming up, it don't mean that they the dopest, but it does mean that they could be better. Got you. You know what I'm saying? They, they really, really could be better. Yes. A few people are giving them better financial advice. I'll give it that. Mm -hmm. You know, better financial advice than say we had or somebody from our generation had. So yeah. I'll give them that. But artistically, we still are, at least in my heart, this is just my heart, mm -hmm. we still are supposed to be so supreme artistically. And so my head always says, why is there only one Kendrick? Mm -hmm. That doesn't make sense to me. Mm. Why is it only one J. Cole? It doesn't make sense to me. You know, 
You know why? That, because everybody we, else is trying to emulate whoever from their region. Yeah. You know, that's winning. Yeah, that's true. You, know, you understand what I'm saying? So, like, yeah. you got Kendrick. He sound like Kendrick. It's himself. Yeah. J. Cole yeah. sound like J. Cole. Yeah, yeah. You know, so that right there. Because everybody be trying to emulate. And I be looking at dudes like, you know, everybody want to be in the strip club, busting it up. Salute. You getting money. <laughs> but, right, right. But y'all niggas is tricks. Yeah, yeah. But Straight I'm up like and down. Pimps. No, yeah, I'm yeah. Confused. I'm confused. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they don't even take they don't even take cues from the people that they could. Like, you know, UGK, one of my favorite groups of all time. You know, I did records with Bun. Like, that's my man, right? If you take your cues from Pimp C, Crit, um, I mean, some of these guys, then at least you would know how to shape it. Facts. They, their shaping is wrong. Facts. You know what I mean? Like, it's the shaping of it that's wrong. But, again, it's all kind of based on earnings. Because it's the way I, I, I got I got a bunch of daddyoisms, but here's one of them. I always tell people, there's no almighty white man, there's an almighty green man. Mm. So, does racism exist? Absolutely. But half the shit y'all think is racist is really based on cash. Because mm. even slavery was based on cash. Had nothing to do with the color of those people's skin. It had something to do with they strong and we can make money off of them. Mm. And if they could have found an alien and did that with them, they would have did it with them too. Mm. So that so 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 the you know slavery is a system slavery is an economic system just like um, uh, capitalism is and just like socialism is and all that kind of stuff. Um, when green gets involved, then, and this is why the Bible said it, it doesn't say money is the root of all evil. It says the love of money is a big difference. Mm. But this is why the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil because when you begin to love money, you po possibly do anything. Facts. Yeah, and, and and so the difference between, I think, an LL Cool J and, say, a new cat, and we could pick from a whole bunch of them, is that LL wouldn't do anything for money. He had a standard, and he did want to make money, absolutely. But I got a standard. Yeah. Public Enemy is not going to do anything to make money. I got a standard. You got you know? standards. Exactly. And, and, and that, yeah, and that's what happens with them is that the earnings are so high that... It's like, okay, I could forfeit whatever. I could whatever because I'm going to get money. You know what I mean? And that's just a, it's a weird, it's a weird way to think because the crap, we're experiencing the downfall culturally more than individually. Mm. Mm. Right? So now we get Dolph getting shot. Juice World, I always say, what the fuck was the mother niggas on the plane with you for, bro? Wow. You got all these little niggas around you and you swallow the pills? These niggas are supposed to take that hit for you. Wow. You bail them out and everything good. But we got that culturally because of the money. Mm -hmm. And we losing people on some weird Mac Miller suicide shit. Like it's weird. I'm telling That'd you. I, it, it, you know, murder. I hate to say this, but I'm going to kind of say it. I almost understand murder mm. because murder, you know, I'm from East New York. So I see mm. people, you know, you cross me, whatever, or I, you, sometimes people get killed for the wrong thing, but there's almost, it's no sense to it, but it's almost a purpose to why they going after you like that. Got you. When you're starting to see the suicides and the, this guy takes pills and dies and that we, we're suffering that. Based on the money. That's where the opioid thing comes from and all of that. Because these niggas wouldn't be on the opioids if they couldn't afford them. That's a fact. You see what I'm trying to say? So that that's where the elders have to come in. Because if the elders the don't come in. Yeah. It, it, mm -hmm. And, and they're not going to. I say this all the time. People ask me about rapping and all that. I say I rap because they're not going to respect me if I don't rap like I rap right now. Mm. And, and ain't no way in the world I'm going to put on talking all that jazz and get their respect. No disrespect to talking all that jazz. Love it. Kill the record when we on stage. Everything. But if I don't, if I wasn't who I am now, they get, you know, they, they, they fuck with me because I really, I, 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 I probably gained four, you know, I ain't lost no step. I probably gained four steps. Mm. 
I tell people all the time, no disrespect to the old daddy-o, but I will smoke his fucking boots. <laughs> I eat that nigga alive. Salute. Alive. You know what I'm saying? And and, and I feel like if, if we could do this, at least eight or nine of us could do that, mm-hmm. Billboard's got to open up a new category called classic hip-hop. Mm-hmm. Spotify's got to new, do a new thing called classic hip-hop. Apple okay. Music's got to do a new thing called classic hip-hop. Great. Title's got to do... It's all got to change. The Grammys got to do a new thing for called classic hip hop because now we have a space. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and that's no different than the blues having a space or some of that other stuff having a space. I mean, look at jazz. Jazz did it mm-hmm. because there's Kenny G and Naji in them, and there's Thelonious Monk and Mile in them. Right. But jazz did it. But you when when if you if 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 if, if, if you're giving out an award or you. When I say, hey, Google, or hey, hey, Siri, or whoever I'm calling at that time, play classic jazz, then they're going to put on some monk and stuff. Mm-hmm. If I say, hey, Siri, put on smooth jazz, they're going to put on some Kenny G stuff. Yep. You see what I'm trying to say? So jazz did it. It's no real reason that we shouldn't have a category of our own. There's I only agree. one reason we don't. It's because we don't still rap. Mm. So people think, you know, we, we've been put out the pasture or or this weird feeling that if Lil Wayne is rich, then Chuck D must be uber rich. That's the dumbest shit to ever do. But it is what people think. <laughs> Word. Yo, daddy, yo, it, it's, it's two more things. I got to definitely clear the air and I want you to promote your new projects. Yes. Right? Now with Junior Mafia, when you were uh-huh. shopping, were you, all right. I'm gonna let you. I'm trying to cut this off. Yeah. All right, it's off. All right. When when y'all were shopping Junior Mafia, did y'all shop the project to uh Bad Boy Giddy and Bad Boy? Um, no. We shopped it to Joy over at Arista because remember, Puff was just getting his Arista deal. As a matter of fact, fun fact about this: when Andre fired Puff. I went to meet Puff in the city at a place called the Tom Ga- Cafe. Mm. And I asked him, Did you need, do you need us to put something around you? Mm. Or do you need some help? Do you need some, some, some protection, some whatever? He said, no, I'm all right. You know, boom, boom, boom. But you know what I'm saying? I offered him that. Um, um, but we didn't chop it to Bad Boy. Right. It, was no, it, it, it wasn't clear yet. Like mm. this whole Bad Boy Clive Davis thing, it really wasn't clear yet. You yeah. know what I mean? So, but we did shop it to Joy because we figured if we get signed to Arista, either they're gonna do what they did with the game, where the game was signed to 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 to, to Interscope, but they put them on Aftermath, right? Or or we'll be at least neck and neck, and we'll still be on the same distributing label yeah. as Big. Yeah, got you, got you. Because you know it was rumors that because before you broke down the real story that it was right. an idea, Junior Mafia. Yeah. Yeah, as, as the group, the rap group. Yeah, yeah. People were saying, "Oh, Diddy didn't want to sign Junior Mafia." You know what I'm saying? When Biggie first shot them to him. No, we didn't. I don't know. I mean, that part could be true because I don't know if Big had a private conversation with Puff about the about the group. He might have. Gotcha. Gotcha. But that wasn't our agreement. Every mm-hmm. every shopping, every shopping, I was always there. I was there with Craig Calman. I was always there. Even when we shopped it to Joy, we did it in my studio in my basement, and Joy came to us. Mm. But all Un had Big do is you have to be at these A&R meetings. And the reason you got to be there, he wasn't there for faith, though. Mm. Um, the reason you got to be there is we don't want them to think you're not in support. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm trying to say? Mm-hmm. Not that so, but yeah. also, you mentioned it on. We got to clear this up somehow, some way. I know it's some street shit. Remember right. when that whole thing happened with him and Jay Z, where mm-hmm, mm-hmm. he allegedly bootlegged Jay album and Jay allegedly stabbed him? Right. Like, could you word it in a way without getting into. No, 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 no. no. I don't it? know. I don't know. I don't know much about it. Okay. Um, because by that time I had went to work for MCA Universal and Un and them kind of went they other way with the with the Undies. I gave them the name Undies and Entertainment. Wow. Um, 
um, um, they hadn't went the other way with that. But the more I think about it, and I don't know, man, you know, I say crazy shit and it goes viral or whatever. The more I think about it, it possibly could be WWF. Oh, shit. You know, the more I think about it. Yeah. Because when I'm taught, oh, WWE, I guess it is. Um, Because when I talk to Un, he never talks about that. Mm -hmm. I, I just don't, I don't know. It's just but WWE that's what, or WWF yeah. on who part? On, on, on Jay-Z Rockefeller? Or? It could be both of them. Mm. It could be both of them. I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, that's just a daddy old thing. Put that on me. No, you understand no, what I'm saying? It's a daddy old thing. Put that on me. But it don't feel... First of all, I know Un. Mm. And so even when they told me Jay-Z stabbed Un, I'm like, yeah, right. And Jay-Z still living? Yeah, he's that done. Right. <laughs> like, who does? Like, come on, man. I'm telling you, yeah. man. I, I done seen this boy do some things. You know what I'm saying? I done seen him do some things. I, done, I know how he get that. And I know that crew around him. And I know his brother, Just. But, but that's the point I'm making, too. Like, they was in the street. Under them. Yeah, so I'm yeah. trying to figure out, like, and the how that, that happen? Around them, and the dudes that was around them. How that happened? You know what I'm saying? How that happened? But... You know, then I don't know nothing about because I'm not there. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. He, he's home the next day. You know, there's no real hospitalization. What? Like I, I don't, I don't know. It just, it, it, it was a weird, weird, weird time. So to me, I feel more about that. I want to ask him about it though. I know he's gonna probably put some of that in Fulton Street, but I do want to ask him about it though because I, I, I just, I can't see the clarity of it because of who I know unto be. And even some of the things that him and I had to experience in the music business. Because now I'm dealing with a guy that's really a street dude and I'm bringing them into the music business. Mm -hmm. And so there's times that I have to explain things to him in terms of the way things in this business is done. Facts. You see what I'm trying to say? Because, you know, he, he didn't really know. You know what I'm saying? He, he, he really didn't know that. You know what I'm saying? So I can't... And, you know, that's my experience with everybody um, that I affiliate with that's from the street, you know, including both of my OGs. Pee Wee Kirkland is one of my OGs, My Conception, my other OG. Mm. I, I know how to balance it out. You know what I'm saying? Like, gotcha. I, something, weird, something crazy happened with Pee Wee one time where I signed an artist because my, my nephew brought me New Child. Mm -hmm. I signed an artist... And MCA was dragging their feet, right? Mm -hmm. So Pee Wee said, yo, I'll just give them their advance back. Mm. You know, and they looking at me like, daddy, we don't do it like that. Like, he can't give the money back. I'm like, you either take this money back or I'm not coming to work tomorrow. Because mm. <laughs> I don't want to be in the middle of this. You see, you see what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Like... You know, the street going to be, you know that, the street going to be the street anyway. And so, yeah, I don't see how the street going to move. You're not. Nah. And, 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 and that, 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 that just, so I'm, I'm still getting back to your question. Like, mm -hmm. I'm like, nah. And nothing happened. Like, unless it happened and somebody got paid. And I don't see un like that. I don't see this happening. And then this guy giving un some money and then un just be quiet. Like, I don't. I, yeah. I don't know. So it feel more staged to me than anything else. Mm -hmm. That's just daddy. -o. Gotcha. Don't put that on nobody else. I nah, know nah, both of them cats. If you know both of them cats want to talk back at me, they can, they know. But yeah. that's how I see it. No, nah, but I like you because you stand on everything you say. So I got a salute oh, yeah. for that. Thank I, you, I, sir. I Thank you. Pretty much a lot of right. <laughs> right, right, right. And I've seen the most backpedaling shit. And I'm nah. like, yo, homie, this is what you said. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then niggas yeah. get mad at mad at me at you. I put what he said in the title. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll be like, what? No, you know what I learned, Emrek? And this is it's the, it's the same kind of relationship. Uh-huh. I told people this all the time when I used to make records on other people. I don't do as much of that anymore. Um, I used to tell artists, especially rappers, I say, man. You want to make a 10 song album and then you want the, the you want nine songs, whatever you're doing. It's really you. It's really your stuff. You know, 
And then on your temp song, you just want to make a record call, you know, tip, tip, toe, tip, toe through Central Park, you know, with some weird um, piano and shit. Mm -hmm. If the record company comes in and makes tip, toe through Central Park, the single, you got to live with that. Exactly. So my point to them is mm -hmm. don't make any records that you don't expect to be a single. Mm. Because you guys think that you could pick what the singles are going to be, and this is definitely an album cut. When you sign to a label, and that's a business, yep. if they think they could sell that one more than this one, you're ass out. That's how it goes. So it's the same thing with their words. Don't say nothing that now you're not going to be able to back up. Yeah. You understand what I'm trying to say? Because I don't do it. I don't do it because I'm threatening nobody. I don't do it because I'm beefing with nobody. I don't do it. I remember when I said the thing about Rakim. Man, the internet ate me alive. <laughs> oh, daddy, oh, probably got a beef with Rakim from a long time ago. Oh, daddy, oh, um, he must have, he, he, Rakim, Stetsasonic is never better than them. Mm -hmm. All of this, and I'm like, yo, mm -hmm. nobody never had no beef with Ra. I'm saying what I'm saying. I'm sticking on what I'm saying. And uh, what I'm trying to do, I ain't going to front it. What I'm trying to do is poke the bear. Because mm. the best thing that could have happened is Rakim made a record back at me, and now we on. Mm. Now hip-hop is back. Now, just say, like, Rock see this interview, and he probably right. be like, yo, you know what? I got to address Daddy on the record, and then yeah. the record come out, and it's, and it's hard. Would you respond? I hope it is. Would you respond? I, I probably would. I probably would. Just to keep it within hip -hop. Just to keep it, yeah, just to keep it going. But my, my thing is, man, I just, I miss, yo, man, something happened to me like a year ago. Because I used to, you know, I like hip hop a lot, right? So I listen to everything. Mm. Everything, I'm a Thursday night dude. I, I tell that to everybody. Midnight Thursday night, I'm usually up and hearing what gets released, right? Mm. So I listen to everything once. Snoop album, uh, it's a new, um, uh, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a on, few new First and foremost, before you go on, right? how do you feel about Snoop Dogg sign, well, buying Death Row and right. dropping a project called Back on Death Row? How do you feel about that? I think it's a great idea. The first thing that came to me, but now I saw something today that let me know. First thing that came to me is, how is he going to make money? Mm. Because record companies don't make a whole lot of money right now. That's a fact. So, but then I just saw a flyer yesterday, a death row show that Snoop, Warren G, Daz and them, Rage is on it, RBX Party is on it. Like everybody that was on the Chronic is on that, um, is on that show. Mm -hmm. And I said, this will work because he's going to promote it. And they're going to be able to make money at least through these venues and all of those type of things. But I think it's a great idea. I just, I just, I was just in, still, I'm still concerned with how he makes money from it. Mm, gotcha. Because we don't sell records anymore. Unless well, he, he did does. say this, though. What? That Death Row is going to be the first record label. Record label in the major label in the Met. Yeah, and the, and, like yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so that'll be dope. Um, I just seen Kanye do something that I've been thinking people should do forever, which he said his new album is only going to be released on his platform. I've been telling people this twelve years. Man, I, I did that with the um, movie I put out called Best Friends. Yeah, it it's the best thing. Yeah. It's the it's it's the best thing in the world. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, um, so I think cats are I think cats are getting a little smarter about it. And um, I th but I think it's a great idea. I think it's a really, really good idea because he's gonna have a lot of support. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. He's gonna have a lot of support, and he's gonna be able. I mean, I even thought about Stetsasonic, mm. and said, man, maybe he, maybe he might be the guy. Because I've been wanting to do, um, um, talk to somebody about doing classics forever. I remember I always wanted to talk to Damon and, and Jay when they was together about doing something called Rockefeller Classics. Mm, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, and it would be dope if Snoop did a, 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 a old school classics or classic hip hop, cla you know, um, um, Death Row Classics, and then just put. And I mean, that's perfect. Death that's Row fire. Classics. Let, let me a and all the records. That's fire. Because I know, man, my guys. So this is what I was getting ready to say. Uh huh. Not too long ago. 
something happened. I can't remember what it was. But something happened and I was either watching. I think it might have been. It might have been when Kane and KRS did the verses. Or it might have been something else. But something really prompted me to have all of this love for my generation. And it's not like I didn't love them. But then I started looking at it. I started putting words besides words. And I said, damn, man. Because I, I love hip-hop, so I always talk about the new cats and mm -hmm. T. Grizzly and whoever, right? But I said, man, we might just be the best. We might. There is a real mm -hmm. chance that we're the best. And I know a lot of people like to dip into the 90s and mm -hmm. say that 90s group, and, and I, I like them. I like Jay-Z. I like Biggie. I like mm -hmm. DMX. I like that group. But when I think about the structures of the Big Daddy Canes, like the Slick Ricks, the moment I fear. I'm like, damn, we nice. Mm -hmm. We are nice. And so my whole issue is that I don't think it's that hard. It just takes patience. Like mm -hmm. I remember, so I'm on my, I'm getting ready to do my seven. Since I've been putting these records out since 2016, this is going to be album number seven. Hold um, on, right now? Yeah, no, it's what? not out. Six is out right now. Okay, so that's, what's, what's that's the name of the sixth album you got out right now? Uh, Goat Antidote. I only did two videos to that, though, because COVID messed me up. I did Guards and Dope Fiends with Rusty Jooks, mm -hmm. and I did um, Gun Store Movie with Indigo Phoenix. So we actually did We actually did two two videos, me and her, because my man had did a remix, and I just had to do another video. But um, Where can they get those projects from? Oh, they everywhere. I mean, I didn't want them to be everywhere, but they everywhere. Okay. They Spotify, Apple Music, all of that. Gotcha. Um, um, I like it, but you go to my band camp and get it, then I get paid. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But um, um, when I think about the records that I'm doing, like, like I said, I'm on my seventh joint now, and I think about it, I wasn't, I don't want to say I wasn't as nice, but I wasn't as wise on my first two albums. Mm. I did, but, but I had a plan, though. And my plan was, all I want these first two records to be is the old man snapping. This nigga mm. daddy is still rapping. That's it. That's all I cared about. He's still rapping. Mm. I don't care really. I know it's not going to be whack. This is something I learned a long time ago. I'm never going to be whack mm -hmm. again, but I may be inapplicable. Gotcha. And that's the theory to make classic hip hop. Yes, sir. It's not that you whack, but if you don't make something that's applicable, Mm -hmm. It's gonna, they're gonna give you your props because you're the OG, but mm -hmm. they really ain't gonna fuck with it. <laughs> you understand? Know but it's like I got you. they don't diss you because you're the OG, yeah. but they really don't fuck with the record. Mm. So that's why you gotta fit. And there's all of this room, man. When you look at the span of what we do now mm. versus just having one Kiss FM and one BLS, wow. right? With this. YouTube and YouTube music and Tidal and Spotify and Apple mm. Music and Deezer and all of these things, mm. the space is really there. Mm -hmm. the, the work has to be quality, one, and then two, which my peers hate. It's got to be rapid fire repeat, and they hate that because mm. they want to make one record every four years. Nah, you got to be consistent. And you can't do that now. Yeah. You know, but if you sit back and you study enough, like I listen to everything so I know what I'm not. Mm -hmm. So people that might ask me, yo, this is way before Dolph got shot. You could see all my old interviews. You would see yep. me shouting out yep. uh, Key Glock and Young Dolph no, because, I, because I, love, I love them. You know what I mean? And I don't sound nothing like them, but I know what I need to be as their grandfather or their uncle or their dad. You see what I'm saying? It's like, you have to know, there's a place for us. There yeah. really, really is a place for us. I told Mel, I could do a Furious 5 album, or I could do an album just on you and Scorpio. Mm. I told Kumo D, I could do a Treacherous 3 album, or I could do an album on just Mo D. Mm. Okay. I told Kaz, I could do a Cold Crush album, or I could do just an album on, I don't care, but I know how you guys should sound right now. Mm. And I don't know if I'm the only one. When, when you telling them this, what are they saying? 
They saying yeah, but then they going on about their business. You gotta understand, we That's are all. What I be hating, man. Yeah, but here's the deal, Emrek. For real, everybody got to do something to keep the lights on. Yeah, I get you understand that. what I'm trying to say. The that. older you get, especially with some of, with some of my peers, if you if you didn't bubble, like say a LL bubbled or some other people bubbled, you may not own a home. Mm -hmm. You might not even be driving what you want. You might be driving something. You might not be driving anything. Nothing. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? And so what happens is your life and your attention to life, most of it has to be on that. Mm. And you don't really realize what making records would do. Of course. Because in your mind, you may be thinking, I'm going to spend a lot of time doing this and nothing's going to happen. And it's just going to be a waste of my time because my bills are still due. And and I'm saying, mm. follow, and you see Chuck on the line saying it all the time, follow what daddy will do. I'm mm. saying, get a laptop. I learned from Milk D, who learned from Teddy Riley. This this Studio One package is only four hundred dollars for everything. Mm. The speakers, the software, every the mic, everything. Wow! Get a laptop, get Studio One, and go to work. And so wherever I am right now, I can record. Wherever I go, I can record. That video that I just dropped that people were digging. Mm -hmm. I did that first. It's six. It's six little videos in it, but I did that first one. In my sister-in-law's bedroom when I was vacationing in Atlanta. Wow. I heard the record. I heard the beat. And I was like, oh, I got to do this now. Mm. I went in her bedroom and I dropped it. Yo, you understand what I'm trying to say? me that you've been doing music how long now? Um, 84. 83, 84. Yeah. You're talking about like damn near 40 years. Yeah. Right? But you still are inspired like you 15, 16. Because it's hip hop. And and that's what hip hop is supposed to always do, bro. That's a fact. It, 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 a fact. It, yo, man, look at what happened when we first came out. Everybody was inspired. Yes, sir. Even people that couldn't rap. Cats going out getting gold chains, getting fly, Word. wearing fat laces, whatever. That's what we supposed to do. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? This whole depressing mode that some of these young kids do, it bothers me because y'all not pumped up. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to talk about the pain like Trippy Red does, I'm with you. Because mm -hmm. Trippy Red got a drug addiction and he talks about it on his records. I'm with that. Mm -hmm. Because then you're giving people the idea. But you should be inspiring. You know what I mean? I it don't mean that. And I tell people this all the time. People go, oh, you know, rap, um, rap. You know, I like rap when it was positive. I said, y you're bugging right now. I could let you hear tapes of Busy B in 1982 where he says, everybody, where the cocaine crew at? Everybody say, blow. You understand? We always been a balance between this happening over here and this happening it's over there. And always that. been positive. Always. Uh, always. Always. But the issue is what we talked about earlier. Learn how to rap. You know what I'm saying? And my whole issue is my peers can rap. When I say rap, they can really rap. Slick Rick can really rap. Big Daddy Kane can really rap. Chuck Rakim can, can really rap. rap. Yeah. Chuck D can really yeah. rap. Like they, yeah. I'm, I'm not talking about none of them. They Daddy, really yo, do this. I, I heard some new shit from you. You snapping. You were snapping from back <laughs> in the days talking about all that jazz, but right. matter of fact, on your page, yeah. you something. I think you might have put it up four or five days ago. You snapping right. on that joint. Yeah, man. I mean, son, that's who we are and that's who we should be. So, so and, and I and thank you, sir. And I think that there's room for that. You understand? Mm -hmm. Because when you see it, you still seeing me with the gray hair. I'm not trying to look young or nothing like that. You understand? And and then when you look at you like, who the fuck is this? And when I then when I start telling you that I'm over sixty, you like, what? You understand? What I'm that's and that's crazy. the effect that we all should have. Yes, sir. They, yes, they sir. honestly. If we was doing this right, and this is no disrespect to my young bucks because I love them, but if we was doing this right, the young bucks should be afraid of us. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what happens when 
when a when a when a a Mary J. Blige sees a, a Roberta Flack. Mm. When a Mary J. Blige sees a Shaka Khan. Facts. She knows she got a bow. Facts. And we don't have enough of that because we're not in a genre that we could just have this stuff sit. Mm -hmm. If we was in that kind of genre, that would be cool. But we're not. We're not country not. Yeah. I don't know about the other stuff. Pop, I don't know. But Hip hop and country, you gotta be current. Yeah, this shit old. That's why, tra yep. That's why Travis Tritt still making records. That's why M Miranda Lambert still making records. It don't mean that she didn't make some dope records. Mm -hmm. But in order for Miranda to be relevant, she gotta do the new joint. Even right. Dolly Parton still making records. Right, that's crazy. And that's what makes you that because they go, they say, man, and they get into you because of something new. And then they go, they look back and they see an old talking all that jazz video or a Susie video and be like, mm -hmm. that was you too? I wasn't even born. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you understand what I'm trying mm -hmm. to say? That's, and that's the whole issue. That's why we need to do Death Row Classics, mm -hmm. I and all, all the records, and we can start off with Positive K and Dana Dane out. Mm. Crazy. Yep. Crazy. What's up with Positive K? Ain't, ain't he doing like... He's chilling. He right now. Me and Pa's been on the phone almost every day. I'm going to and all this joint for him. Mm. Is I he just doing off. comedy now or I'm bugging? Yeah, he's doing comedy. He's doing comedy. Actually, he was snapping. He was snapping on T.I. Because T.I. came out and said he was the... He, first of all, they're in the same city because Pa's been in Atlanta for a little while now. They're in the same city, and T.I. came out and said, oh, he the first rapper to do comedy. He said, man, Daddy, oh, he even at the same club I'm at. He said, wow. I said, they biting. I said, they biting. He said, yeah, damn right, they biting. Wow. See, that's crazy that you mentioned that because I was going to go into that because I yeah. saw Positive K doing this years ago. Like, how long yeah, are you yeah. doing this now? Oh, I don't know. I don't know because yeah. I always talk to my other things. But... Like this year, he been doing it for No, a no, years. no. Yeah, it's been before this year. Yeah. It's, it's definitely been before this so year. So when I saw T.I. doing it, I said, yo, he's taking a page out of Positive K book. Yeah, absolutely. But see, that's the problem, too. Motherfuckers don't pay homage. They don't, man. They it's really so don't. It's disrespectful out here. It is. It is. And that's it my is. problem with a lot of shit. I'm like, yo, when somebody opened the lane up for you. Right. Man, yeah, yeah. You supposed to salute like yo, homie, good looking. Now, yeah, yeah. now we we able to eat over here now. Yeah. But they act, but they act like they did it themselves. Facts. And yeah. That's the, that's the point I be making. I'm like, yo, y'all niggas know how I give it up with the boss. And yeah, y'all was telling me, yo, wreck, you can't rap and interview another rapper. It's terrible. right. I said, well, watch me do it. You know right, I mean? right. Now they now, all do it. Now, now they all want to do it. Everybody doing it, but where's yeah. your homage at? You know, <laughs> exactly. I, I get his homage and Kane right. And everybody yeah, yeah. else. But right. this and rep, yo, and rep open up a lane for rappers to interview yeah. other rappers and make yeah, yeah, yeah. street on the internet. Yeah, yeah. That? It's true. It's true. It's true. Yeah. I saw your I saw your journey. They 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 but you know what, M Rep? You just gotta keep doing what you do, right? Uh -huh. And then in your own way, whether it's a book or NFT, whatever, in your own way you document it. Not facts, King. You know what I'm saying? Like, like that's the one thing, man. Something happened to me, man. I was praying one day, and something happened to me one day, man, that I got. And what I got was I got to be the last man standing. Because in the very beginning, I was trying to convince everybody. And I realized and I recognized that everybody just not going to come. That's a fact. It even took me a long time to even get Stetsasonic back in the studio. I've been mm. wanting them back in the studio since I was making the records in 2016. Mm. But it took me a minute to get them back. I'm happy because Stet records are coming out great. But the point, of, the point of the matter is with some of my other peers, you just got to be the last man standing. Because once you do that, then you open. you opened up one lane already. Mm -hmm. You continue to be that. You end up being the last man standing. Now you can open up the lane even in a different way. Definitely. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? But that that's all it's about now. It's like... I agree with you. I agree the consistency with you. is important. Like, the consistency is super important, especially with the with this kind of medium and these kind of platforms because 
they could be watching me and you right now. But I'm sure as I see the numbers go up and down, they're getting off of us and going over here. Of getting over there and going to Clubhouse. Getting over here and going here. Like, there's so many options that a lot of times people don't stay and stick. Mm -hmm. But the more we could put it out there, yeah. then it's almost like, and that's what happened. Yeah, that's what happened with me. You know what I'm saying? What happened with I did two things. One, you and you did it already too. Mm -hmm. You got a name that if I put M Rec in, I only get you. <laughs> that's dope. You understand what I'm trying to say? Salute. Salute. That's why I did Professor Daddio, because Daddio was bringing up cookies mm -hmm. and restaurants and all of that. Saying. Saying. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So that's the first thing you do. Yeah. You know what I mean? What you already did, right? Yeah. And then you just keep pounding them out. Because once yeah. you keep pounding them out, Especially like with stuff like reels and all of that stuff that's starting to happen, your shit ends up showing up in places that you didn't even think it would show up. Yeah, you see what I'm trying to say, but that's how that's how you got to do it, man. That's how you got to do it now. You know what I'm saying? And know inside that you're the best. Definitely, King. Just know inside that you're the best. You know what I'm saying? I don't care what nobody around you is talking about. Fuck them, man. Wow. Definitely. And that's when I teach artist development. That's the same thing I teach them. I always tell people when I teach artist development. They come to me, I say, listen, man, if you're not at least trying to be the best, don't give me your money. Because mm. I'm not taking no money just, oh, I'm going to take, no. Or you booty, and I'm just taking your money like, yeah, because, you know, she really not going to turn out to be nothing, but, you know, I'm going to get this money. No, I'm not doing that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You got to know inside, regardless to what any of them is saying, because most of the time, naysayers are suckers anyway. That's a fact. You know what I'm saying? Haters are suckers anyway. That's a fact, King. Because ain't no real, real reason to hate on M. Rec. What the fuck is you hating on him for? What he do? Man. Oh, he went in your crib and took your TV. Oh, I know. <laughs> the fuck, you don't even know him. Facts, King. You understand what I'm trying to say? So, so, so you gotta realize the sucker in them when okay. they when they like that. You know what I'm saying? You gotta. Mm -hmm. I, I I try to tell you know. I told my family this, man. Sometimes they listen. Sometimes they get a little mad when I say this. I said, you know, when I look at people, I only have two ways I look at people. And, you know, kids like, what's that, dad? And I'm like, I look at them as if would I be robbing them or would they be with me robbing with me? Mm. Wow. That's deep. That's it. You understand what I'm trying to say? Because if I would, if I'm, if it don't mean that I don't associate with the ones mm. that I would be robbing. But I realized that they not built to go into the trench with me. Mm -hmm. If that got to happen, I got to leave him to the side. Mm -hmm. He's a nice person. And I leave it there. Yeah. Fact. You know? Yo, daddy, yo, this question, I got to um, ask you this. You mentioned at one time, oh, you probably still standing on it. Jersey rappers are the best rappers, I think. Well, how I know you was going to ask me that? I've been thinking about that since yesterday. And I said, M. Rec is going to ask me this question. <laughs> I say that because the way these guys are, you really don't want to get in a cage match with Red Man. Fact. You really don't want to get in a cage match with Tretch. I mean, it's, it's a thing that they brought because of where they from. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um... Yeah, there's guys that stand out. Yeah, yeah, Joe, yeah, yeah. Joe Joey, nice. Um, um yeah, Rakim, um, Rakim Shabazz, um, and and then we don't want to even go girl because all girls lose to Lauren. Everybody. Oh yeah. Everybody. Every, all all girls lose to Lauren. Every girl. Oh, yeah. And I ain't even mentioned Latifah. You right. Now let you us know, do this though. So, some people. Or Rod Digger. Oh, Rod Digger. Facts, Jersey. Now, some people feel like Queens got the best rappers. You got, you know what I mean? I mean, Queens do have some real. Queens got the goat. Nah, you know, and, and rock him. Yeah, they 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 got the goat. They got Nas. They got L. Oh yeah, rock him. Uh, from, um, Long, yeah, rock him Long, Long Island. That's right. Yeah, yeah, but 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 they do have oh, Nas. You call it the goat, LL from Queens. Yeah, yeah, he's he, he made the turn. Yeah, he, he did. He did. Yeah, he yeah. got that though. You gotta get yeah, that. Got, got gotta give him that. You gotta give him that. Um, running them. Um, you know, maybe not 
lyrically, but definitely putting it down. Yeah. Um, Mikey D, who's mm -hmm. fucking phenomenal. Um, yeah, I mean, Queen's got some good stuff. I just, they don't have the cage match cats. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, them cage match, like, that, that, niggas don't really know how nice Tretch is, B. Yeah, Tretch is super nice. Yeah, you can't, you, you, and, and then Reggie, man. Red, I, I Red, would say, hold on, Red Man is the reason why I started rapping. I told Red Man this. Because he told, he taught you you could do them words in different ways. Fact. It's like me and battle rap. That's why I like battle rap. Because oh, they taught man. me something. You know what I mean? Yeah. I didn't know that before. And then I listened to T-Rex or one of them. And I'm like, did he just do that? Okay. I see where this is going. Well, you <laughs> mentioned battle rap. because That was one of my questions, too. I totally forgot. Right. Who's your top five right now in battle rap? Right now, um, JC's still up there for me. JC, Surf. Surf um, a problem right now. It's, it's a new kid I really like. I like that kid, um, real name Brandon. Yeah, he's dope. Um, easy to block cap. Easy to block captain. Easy coming up. E easy, easy definitely up. on, on, like on his way up. I like chess. Yeah, chess, chess. I always liked chess from the beginning. Even when he was throwing up on stage, I like chess. Um, um, let me see some girls. Um, Couture still got it. Um, yeah, he's fire. Um, Jazz still got it. Mm -hmm. That last battle Jazz had, damn, she ate that girl alive. Casey J, Vixen, mm -hmm. um, you know, you got to give DJ Gotti props. Gotcha. You rock with um, Miss Hustle? Oh, yeah, I love Hustle. Yeah. Miss Hustle. I love. think Hustle, well, well, I think it's this month. Remy's dropping a record with all of them. You see, Hustle, yeah, she, she's doing a, yeah. um, a battle event. I think Chrome yeah. 23. Uh, yeah. Shouts to Remy. She's doing that. Hustle Shouts should be making records, though. Yeah. She's yeah. probably the first female battle rapper that got the. Because battle rappers have to grow into having the record thing. You know what I'm saying? Then while we got, Hustle got it all around. Hustle yeah, she does. Yeah. Exactly. Then, and then, you know, while we're on battle rap, shout out my squad, Team Homie. You know, I'm, I'm in Team Homie with Swave and all. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, Come yeah, on, so talking about out, battle, battle rap. I gotta shout out Queen of the Ring, Babs Bunny. Oh yeah, Bunny, absolutely. Going vague and all that. Absolutely, that absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. On shout out to the girl Cheddar too. Cheddar, nice. Yeah, I put her one of my rhymes. <laughs> Definitely. So, yo, yeah. you saying that about battle rappers and how you feel about that culture? I mean, it's still right. hip hop. Who would you want to produce or A and R for? In battle rap. Surf, twerk, mm. chess, and I would like, it's going to be hard as fuck, but I would like to take on the DNA. That's going to be hard. Mm. That's going to be hard. Yo, you know See, who I forgot? You know, who? You, know who I, you, know who I, you know who I forgot that I fuck with heavy? Who? Tay Rock. I fuck with Tay. Oh, Tay, 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 Tay nice too. Yeah. Um, let me tell you, let me tell you. Mm -hmm. The battle rap mistake with the records. They don't know which voice to use. The tone. Exactly. They don't know what tone. Even Chess just did a diss record. Fire. But he doesn't know which tone to use. Mm -hmm. Because being on stage and kicking it and being in the studio and doing it, two, two totally different things. Different things. Daddy, yo, you got to understand. Well, you understand. They got to understand right. your voice is an instrument. It is. It Especially is. when you're doing music. Now, if you battle rapping and you're doing acapella, then I You almost don't have to be an instrument. You just got to be a lyricist. Exactly. But when, but you, when you go you in the studio, music, when yeah. you eat in the music... All that music is in there with you. Facts, King. But see, that's the science they don't understand. Yeah, they don't get that yet. They don't, they don't and they don't that. know what kind of records to make. Because, like, Twerk made an album that actually wasn't that bad, but it sounds so trappy... Mm -hmm. That is is indistinguishable. Wow, you see what I'm trying to say, and 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 so they're not going into records the way they go into the ring, because in the ring they're very distinguishable. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. could close your eyes and know it's twerk. You could close your eyes and know that it's Tay. You understand Fact. what I'm trying to say? Fact. But on in the studio, you don't know when you hear their songs because a few of them have made songs. Mm -hmm. You don't know who they are. 
That's they don't know how to do the distinguishable thing on record. You you know who got it? Um, who? Surf. He yeah, he surf got it. Records yeah, yeah, yeah. Surf got it. Got a uh, uh, distinctive sound about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Him, yeah, you know yeah. Him? So yeah. he definitely got it in battle rap, and he got it with the music side of things. So I'm yeah, yeah. To him on yeah. that. But yeah, Daddy, yo, um, let them know where they can get this new project from. We've been rocking two hours straight. Hey, um, just go to my band camp, the Professor Daddy-O band camp. Everything is up there. All of the records are up there. It's some super dope surprises because a few of the things I did, like my um, my Aldola Dakaya album, I only did one video to that. So a lot of people haven't heard like the whole album. You gotcha. know what I mean? And the whole album is a story about a guy, and then most of the album is about being on the inside. It's a jail album, really. You know what I mean? It's like two two records started off, and then the whole other time is conjugal visits and when you coming home and all that. So it's a lot. It's a lot of good stuff up there, man. Because when I make these projects, I put a lot into them. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't get to shoot. Sometimes I don't get to shoot as much video as I can mm -hmm. um, or want to. Um, so so yeah. And 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 nowadays it's it's become such a visual culture that if I don't put out a video. You know, like I got some stat records right now. We did the first video. We did really well. Mm -hmm. Shout out LL Cool J and Rock the Bells. We was in heavy rotation on Rock the Bells for mm -hmm. twelve weeks. Um, but, but you know, I can't release these records without a, you know, without a video. It's just yeah, not gonna really. It's, yeah, 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 it's just it's just not gonna, gonna, gonna work out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so yeah. So some of the records that I haven't done videos on, that that you know they 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 could be real enjoyable. Um. So yeah, everything's on my band camp. If you cheat, then you know, go to your Spotify or your Apple Music. But if you got a little, you know, you got a little something, you know, throw probably a little something. It ain't I you know, I'm probably like seventy cent a record, so the whole album ain't I don't think it's even ten dollars. You know what I mean? I'm going to support, you know what I'm saying? Thank you. Bro. Thank you. Me up, you real shit, cause I got this white jacket on, don't no, know. No. Yeah, I stopped selling dope, but I ain't never stopped being a criminal. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a king, king, king. Riding through the streets like a king, king, king. I'm a, I'm a king, king, king. Peace, world. If you're looking to promote and advertise your business or your brand on MREC TV or you interested in becoming a sponsor and to be featured as a guest on a Backstories podcast, contact MRECTV submissions at gmail.com. That's M-R-E-C-K-T-V submissions at gmail.com. Peace. MREC TV.